a scout's dream. Yo, what's up? It's someone that's someone, and welcome back to today's report. Today's report was sent in by Mo Hoffman. When this happened, summer of 2018, the substance is used, psilocybin mushrooms, unknown strain, synthetic cocaine, unknown substance, omphalotus solarius, and ferns, at a dose of 4.5 grams of shrooms, and a few small lines of synthetic cocaine. For the route administration, he notes, ate the mushrooms by themselves and snorted the cocaine off a log, smote the wild mushrooms in blue construction paper with some dry forest ferns. Gender, male, weight, around 110 pounds, height, 5'9". For his prior experience, he notes, mushrooms, tried weed a few times, tried DXM and DPH a couple times, and one Adderall overdose. For his set, he was looking to hang out with friends after finishing their camp activities, and the setting, deep in the forest, near a Boy Scout summer camp reserve. Alright, so this is one crazy ass experience, and I really don't say that lightly, considering everything that pops up onto this channel. But, Mo sent me this a while back, from when he was in Boy Scouts. He and a friend had been indulging in substance use as of late, and Faye would bring them to camp to have this wild night and combination. The mushrooms were one thing, but adding on synthetic cocaine, then the two others they stumbled upon in the woods is completely something else. The synthetic cocaine was prepared from a friend of theirs using lidocaine, which I don't know exactly what this is, but they get a large amount of it. Then with a the poisonous mushroom and deciding to smoke it with ferns and blue construction paper on top of things, yeah, you guys can already tell, this was pretty reckless, and they didn't have that good of a grasp of what they had going on, I'd say. And there's something that happens in this that's actually pretty disturbing. You'll just see what. And also, by the way, this was voted next for, so make sure to look out for the next vote. But I'm sure you'll enjoy this one, so without further ado, let's dive right into this. My name is Mel Hoffman. And I wrote this up about a trip I had with some friends at summer camp at a young age. I thought it was very interesting and a fun story. All the names used are changed. You can include my name in the video as I'd prefer that you give me credit of some sort. I've been watching your vids for years now and I appreciate what you're doing for the community, educating and entertaining. When we were younger, my friend Caden and I had been part of a local boy scout troop for a couple years and our summer camp in Pennsylvania was in a few weeks. We were reckless drug users at this time, and knew it would be a great time to get some fun drugs going on because we had been previously denied from spending time with each other unsupervised. All due to our failed diphenhydramine trip, during which we both were hospitalized and flamed by our parents, as we hadn't been caught before this. So we planned to bring DXM cough syrup and four tabs of acid on the road with us. Shortly after planning it, his mom took a screenshot of the text thread containing the plan from his phone and sent it to my parents, which landed us in this predicament. Luckily, we managed to talk our way out of getting removed from the trip, but we would be searched before departing. This left us with a week of sober camping, and no fun. About the third day into our week, if I remember correctly, me and some other friends were chilling by our hammocks. It was around 4pm, and we were skipping out on our last merit badge course of the day. My eyes widened when I saw Caden come elegantly skipping down the path to our secluded hangout spot with a bag in his hand. He came up to me and said, Look what I stole from the science lab. Inside the bag were some glass test tubes filled with some white shit that I didn't recognize. Lidocaine, he exclaimed. You can use it to make crack. I immediately lit up with an empowered grin. Suddenly, our black friend Craigton emerges from the forest behind us. I'll turn that shit into enough synthetic cocaine to last us the rest of the week, and if you want me to keep some of it, I'll slide you some of my special psilocybin mushrooms. Caden and I had known him for a long time, and we bought drugs from him before, so we decided to trust him and give him the lidocaine. He came back to us the next day, about 10 minutes after we had just eaten dinner, so we basically had no responsibilities for the rest of the night. He handed us two bags containing approximately 4 grams of synth coke, and 9 grams of dry shrooms. We looked at each other in shock of the overwhelming amount. We had not expected this much and knew what we were going to do that night. We split the mushrooms and took them at around 7pm before it got dark outside. About halfway through the come up, we decided it would be a good idea to snort some of the synth coke we got from Crichton. 
I had never done real coke before, but Caden said it was very similar. Soon after a few lines, off a fallen tree, near our hammocks, I started to feel intense nausea. I began to have some feelings of regret, but I was distracted when our friends Carl and Jackson came up to us. They were both three years younger than us, but they knew we did drugs and were cool with it. They were Chinese, and they were pretty fun to hang with, so I was glad that they joined us. The mushrooms started to kick in as it got dark, which was an interesting feeling, almost like we were sure something bad was going to happen because the sky was getting darker and the ground was getting longer. It was completely dark now, and all the coke was gone. I'm sure we didn't take it, but somehow it was gone. Our friend's faces were bending, and it was pretty weird. Suddenly, Caden had an alarming realization. He started rambling about some mushrooms he found in the woods earlier that day, that supposedly get you high. He called them space mushrooms, and insisted that we go pick some and smoke them. The ground was a moving conveyor belt that we were floating above. I felt like I had little control over the direction I was going, like a slow, flat roller coaster that was following Caden. We stopped at a patch next to a big tree that was littered with tiny mushrooms that were orange all over. He had us pick all of them out of the patch and put them in the bag. I don't remember the logic behind most of our decisions at this point, but that was when it started to get weird. We grabbed some ferns that were drying on a large rock in the river, and we were upset when we realized we had no rolling papers. We then went to a younger kid's tent and saw one of his blue merit badge cards. It was the swimming merit badge. We wrote out the ferns and the mushrooms in the card with some of the scent coke sprinkled in that Caden had in his pocket. Me, Caden, Carl, and Jackson all passed it around. Carl was foolishly having a massive coughing fit as we saw a flashlight being carried in our direction. This was when we knew we were fucked. It was the scoutmaster, Mr. Carlfield, and Carl was still coughing uncontrollably. He heard us and yelled, Hey! And we began to panic. We put out the marriage badge boy and started walking down the path, pretending like nothing happened. It was around 11pm at this point and our curfew was 10.30. He started running towards us. Jackson was hiding behind a tree and I couldn't find Caden. Mr. Carlfield came up to me and Carl and grabbed us each. He had us by the neck under each of his arms. I don't know what you guys are up to, he whispered, panting and out of breath, but you have to get back to the tents and if you tell anyone about this, you're out of the troop. He started reaching his hands down our chest. Keep in mind, Mr. Carlfield was about 6'4 and probably weighed over 250 pounds, so he was a lot bigger than us. I asked him what he was doing, and he put his hand over my mouth. This allowed Carl to escape, and he ran away. I looked back at him and noticed Caden unconscious, laying on the ground with a bunch of synth coke on his face. My body filled with fear. Mr. Carlfield's hand brushed down my stomach and into my pants. It felt like a million hands of sane were invading the temple of my body. I couldn't believe it. After about 10 minutes of being molested, I got back to the hammocks. Caden, Carl, and Jackson were all there, and I was excited to tell them what happened, and that everything was okay, besides my emotional security. They told me that the mushrooms we had smoked was a poisonous fungi called Omphalotus hilarious, according to a Google search. We all started to freak out, especially me and Caden, because trees were growing out of our friends' eyes and ears. Also, the sky was melting, and the trees were the only thing holding it up. We calmed down and just chilled at the hammocks for the rest of the night, did some more of that scent coke, returned the half-burned merit badge application to the Jewish kid we stole it from, and slipped the rest of the orange mushrooms into the Lucky Charms in one of the other troops' trailer. Overall, it was a good experience.